Um, I'm a lecturer at uh, Cardiff University School of Mathematics, and um, I have a couple of uh, research uh, pieces of software, and I'm a uh, 2016 fellow of the SSI. And I'm putting up a slide that's not mine. Uh, this is actually a slide that a friend and, and colleague, uh, Daniele Procida, put up at PyCon Namibia. Daniele is a member of the core team of Django. Django is a Python library, uh, it's a Python web framework, and he loves documentation, and he's, he's arguably one of the leaders in the field of, of documentation. He put this slide up about how he feels documentation should be organized, and he argued that if organized this way, not only will It'll be, will your documentation be easier to manage, but it'll actually improve. And when he put that slide up, I didn't like this, and I, I kind of went back to my usual rule of just because someone comes to a conference and puts something on a slide, that doesn't mean it's, it's true. Um, but I really like Daniele, and Daniele is someone I can always have a conversation with, and, and we often disagree with each other. Um, and my initial thought was I didn't think this framework applied to research software. Um, but I think I was wrong, and I think that if you organize your documentation in this way, uh, clearly making out what would be a tutorial for your documentation, so a hand-holding exercise of bringing people to the, to the piece of software who've never used it or don't even necessarily know why they need to use it, how-tos for people who have already, already know what they're doing but need to find particular things, discussions, some back, background uh, readings, for example, uh, scikit-learn as example, the areas in documentation where they actual t actually talk about the mathematics behind the algorithms, that would count as, as discussion. And then, and then finally reference, which would just be um, the API thing. If you have any thoughts about that, I'd like to talk about documentation. <laughs>